So in this video, we're going to talk about driving in the snow. Now, snow driving is something that I love teaching my clients because it's really gonna be your first experience with somebody that can save you when it all goes horribly wrong. Because the first few times that you deal with the snow, especially when it comes to your braking, the chances are it's gonna go wrong. Um, we will have lesson plans where I will teach my client how to deal with a particular scenario, i.e. a skid, and it could very easily take four or five attempts until the client starts to really understand the basics of what's required when it comes to driving in the snow. So if you're lucky enough that you're doing lessons when it's snowing, have those lessons. As long as your instructor is happy to take you out, some people don't. Um, if it's really bad snow, then that's fair enough. But if you can, practice, practice, practice. Now, first things that we need to think about when we're dealing with the snow is making sure that your car is prepared for that weather condition. So make sure that your windows are all clear not just part of the front windscreen and leaving that half or doing the front windscreen and not doing the side windows because that's illegal, okay? If a police officer sees you, that is three points on your license and a fine. The other thing you need to think about when it comes to preparing your vehicle is making sure that your lights are all visible, making sure that you can see the front, the side indicators and the rear lights, as well as your number plates and the number plate illumination. Other things that you need to think about taking into consideration as well is the roof of your vehicle. Now, if your roof is covered in snow, that is a massive danger, okay? If you hit the brakes and the, wind, the snow goes from the, wind, uh, the roof onto your windscreen, you now can't see anything and you are now blind. So what you need to make sure is that your roof is completely clear of snow. The other thing as well was if you're starting to accelerate, what could happen is the snow will then come off the roof and hit the car behind you, which is then a danger to them. Again, this is points and fine, but it's a heavier points and a fine. It can be up to nine points. So really important that you think about the roof of your car. Keep the heaters on, obviously to keep yourself warm, but also to stop any more snow or ice forming on your windows. And also make sure that your side mirrors are clear as well. Use your lights, make sure that, again, people can see you as effectively as possible. And also to take into consideration your feet, okay? We don't wanna be driving with a load of snow on our feet because if we go to hit the brakes, our foot might slip. So again, make sure that your shoes are clear of snow and ice. Other things that you can do to prepare for the snow as well is think about your tires. If your tires are summer tires, then they're not gonna be as efficient in the snow. So therefore you have to take even more care into consideration. But if there, if you do have the pleasure of having snow tires, then yes, you will pull away a bit easier and you will also stop in a shorter amount of distance, but still respect it. It's not a get out of jail uh, free card. It is still dangerous. Now you might see people in four by fours thinking that they're immune to the snow. Yes, they will pull away a lot easier and in a way, yes, they can stop quicker if the car's basically got a good uh, braking tyre system and gearing system. But it can also take longer in a 4x4 simply because of physics. The more mass that the vehicle has, the longer it will take to stop. So if your car weighs three tonnes, say something like a Land Rover, Range Rover, it will take a lot longer to stop even with a four, wheel, four by four wheel drive system than a small little Fiat 500. So don't think you're immune to snow just because you've got a four by four system. Now, in the video that you're going to see now, I will show you how to deal with pullaways, braking, turning, and skids. And if you feel like you need to ask any questions, please put a co comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But please, please, please practice and respect the snow. And if you do have snow for the first time after you've passed your test and you don't have an instructor or anyone sitting next to you, practice at a low speed first. Get used to what's needed for skid control, what the braking system is like, what your pullaway is like. Don't just go straight onto your drive because it's gonna be really dangerous.
Okay, so in this first pull away, I'm going to pull away in first gear. Now, what you'll find is the car will start to wheel spin because there's not enough torque being generated to give you enough traction. So I'm just gonna do a normal sort of pull away, fairly quickish, and you'll see the difference with the wheels. And you can see the car has a little bit of a drift there as well. Now, this time I'm going to pull away in second gear. You can see I don't get the wheel spin a little bit there at the end. And all I'm doing is a normal bite point. I'm not doing anything different. I'm just doing a normal hold of the bite point and allow the car to build up its speed. This time I'm going to try it in third. You can see it's a much slower pull away. I'm holding my bite point, but we get a potential of a stall. So if we hold that bite point more, prolong it, allow the car to build up that momentum, you'll see that it might even be able to pull away. So this time I'm gonna go in fourth gear, but I'm just gonna hold that bite. You see much, much slower pull away, but no wheel spin at all. I've just dipped the clutch there but I've been able to pull away. Now, if we're driving on a hill, we need to take into consideration that we're going to be fighting gravity as well. So there is a much higher chance of being able to get wheel spin and a higher chance of even not being able to pull away. In those situations, what you can do is even pull away in reverse. And yes, I do mean actually reversing to pull away. Reverse is the most powerful gear when it comes to torque. So if you're struggling to go up a hill, you might be able to go up it in reverse gear. I don't advise you to really do that. Try to plan a better route, but if you have no options, that could be your best option. So now we're going to talk about braking in the snow. Now, what you've got to do is respect the snow. It's going to take a lot longer for the car to stop, around 10 times the amount of distance in the dry. Now, yes, we do need to use our brake pedal, but what I also want you to think about is down changing your gear. So instead of just relying on your brakes, rely on the engine braking effect, okay? So this is down to coasting, as you probably remember from your theory test. Now, by down changing your gear, you're going to generate engine braking, which will help slow the car down. And engine braking is much less likely to make the car go into a skid. So therefore, you should be able to stop in a quicker distance. So what I'm going to do now is do my pull away. And think about what speed would be appropriate on this road. So I would say 10 miles per hour. Yes, 10 miles an hour, yes, it's slow, but we've got nothing but snow and ice on this road. So I'm doing 10 at the moment. Now, I'm going to brake without doing a down change, okay? So, when I get to this next car on the left, I'm gonna apply the brake. And there's my brakes, and I'm skidding, 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 stop. Okay, so it's taken me two and a half bit car lengths to stop in that amount of distance, which is quite a lot considering it's only 10 um, miles per hour. Now this time what I'm going to do is a down change of my gear. So I'm going to first gear and then bring the clutch up as well as applying a little bit of brake. So I'm going to do that when I get to this vehicle here on the left. There it is, clutch up to the bike point. A little bit of a skid but you can see I've stopped in one car length. So a much quicker distance to stop in. So by down changing your gear, you're going to be controlling the speed much more efficiently and stopping that chance of going into a skid. So by going into second, into first, clutch up to the bite point, hold the bite, allow the car to slow itself down. You can bring it all the way up, but sometimes at a higher speed, you might go into a skid. So it's good to hit that bite point and feel the car actually slowing itself down. So I'm coming up to this roundabout, I'm going to be turning left and I'm applying my brakes already, down changing my gear so everything is nice and slow. I'm hardly using really any brake at all. Now I can see there's a bit of snow on this ground here so again I'm just going to take it nice and easy as I go into this bend. I don't want to go fast, if I go quick into a bend the chances are I'm going to get powered understeer. So I'm going to turn right here. 
and I'm just gonna go into it with a bit more speed, okay? So there's my steer, and you can see I'm not going really where I wanted to go there. It carried on pulling me over to that left-hand side. And that's the effect of going too quick into a corner. So what you want to be doing is going slower. Don't turn harsh. The moment you start turning harsh is again the moment that you're going to start to generate skid or slide as it's technically known as. So slow it all down, make sure it's nice and slow, controllable, make sure there's no pedestrians that we need to take into consideration and then make your turn. So now we're going to talk about how to control a skid. Now a skid is something that you really don't want to be putting yourself into, which is why again, it's really important that you do your pullaways effectively, you do your brakes effectively, and you do your steering effectively. If you do one of those three things incorrectly, you're gonna go into a slide or a skid, but it's something that you want to practice. Now, what we need to think about is turning into the skid. Now you've probably heard of that term before, but what that basically means is if the back of the car goes to the right, we need to turn right. And the reason for that is because the back of the car will go right as the front of the car goes left. And remember, it's the front wheels that do your steering. So as I go into this corner here, I'm gonna turn into it nice and smooth to avoid that skid. But if I pull the handbrake up, which now puts the back of the car into a slide, you can see I'm having to adjust my steer. Now what we're trying to do is get the wheels to face where you want to go and keep them in that direction. So if the back of the car slides to the right and I need to steer right, I still want the wheels facing the road ahead. And it's really important to know how the front wheels are affected by your steering to see how much steer is actually needed. So as I pull up the handbrake on this next um, attempt you're going to see the back of the car slide in one direction I'm not sure where it all depends on what the car really wants to do concentrate on the steer yes slow the car down but concentrate on the steer and smooth steering don't panic steer because as soon as you start doing harsh steers the chances are it's probably going to go the wrong direction so I'm going to pull the handbrake up here you can see the back of the car has gone to the left so I've just put so left turn on to counter that steer. Don't panic, keep it calm, keep it smooth. You can see it is controllable, but you've got to relax, which is a lot easier said than done. And that's why it's important to do it in your driving lessons. So here we're on a slight downhill. So this is gonna really amplify it. And I'm gonna leave it quite late before I then do my steer. And you can see the car's getting into a bit of a side on slide here. So I'm just trying to control that position. You can see I'm still at like a 20 degree angle here. Now I'm just coming up to the end of the road. So I'm gonna let go of the handbrake. But you can see I'm still turning. It doesn't make a difference if you do it one handed. The main thing is to control the car in that skid. So if you can see it start to wander, do whatever you need to do. Some people prefer to control the skid with one hand. Um, if you've ever seen people drifting, it's not uncommon that people control the car in a drift with one hand, simply because you can normally maneuver the steering wheel a little bit quicker and more efficiently. Um, so don't worry about it. It's not your driving test at the end of the day. Remember, you can't do a driving test in the snow. Now here, I'm going to turn right. I'm going to pull the handbrake up mid-turn here, so that's going to amplify the effect of the skid. You can see the back of the car's gone. I'm just controlling my skid. A little bit of a tweak, because I don't want the car pulling over. You can see just one hand, nothing to worry about. It will control itself, okay? If you need to tweak it, do so, okay? So I hope this video has helped you understand what's needed when it comes to driving in the snow. And as always, if you need to ask any questions, please put a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.